Dear students, in this module, we'll look at how the information flows from the DNA level into the RNA level and from the RNA level into the proteins. As you know, the DNAs, they are comprised of four different types of nucleotides, A, T, C, and G. Once this DNA encodes the RNA, the T is converted into a U. However, A, C, and G, they stay the same. So therefore, the types of nucleotides that encode an RNA are still four in number. However, once the RNA uh, translates into proteins or the information goes into the protein level, there are 20 different types of amino acids. So any protein may contain from these 20 different types of amino acids. The information flow, as dictated by the central dogma, is that the first step is called the transcription. In transcription, the information is taken from the DNA and is put into the RNAs. Next, translation happens. The information goes from the RNA into the proteins. Therefore, the information flow can be stated as the DNA uh, setting information for the RNA and the RNAs encoding for the proteins. Moreover, the proteins are later folded into 3D conformations and then they are modified with functional groups so as to impart specific function for each protein. Let's take a look at how this encoding process from the DNA to the RNA and then onto the proteins takes place. As you can see in this table, there are about 20 different types of amino acids that are listed by their names, by their acronyms and by their symbols. So typically each amino acid is referred by its one letter symbol, which in this case is A for alanine and lysine or K and so on and so forth. So therefore, as you have A, C, T and G or A, C, U and G in the DNA and RNA respectively, you can represent the amino acids by 20 different alphabets as shown here. Okay, so how do these amino acids get encoded from the DNA? As a first step, you know that you have if you have a DNA sequence, then you replace all T's with a U. Hence, you arrive at the RNA sequence. And then you have to select codons, that is, three nucleotide bases at a time. And three of these nucleotides can actually code for a single amino acid. Now, which combination of these three nucleotides forms this? amino acid is given in this table. If you have three nucleotides, then you can check which amino acid these three nucleotides code. Let's take a look. If you have the first nucleotide as C, the second nucleotide as another C, and the third nucleotide another C, then you will actually encode for proline. You can read the sequence here, which is C, 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 so it will encode for proline. Similarly, if you have any combination that can be generated from these four nucleotides, you can look up this table and find which amino acid is encoded. Please also note that there are two combinations of nucleotides that are given here and one combination that is given here which actually encode for the stop codon. So if you have these three nucleotides sequences coming within the RNA sequence, then you can stop encoding for your protein. But how do you start? So you can look at the start codon that is given here, AUG. So most of the times proteins, they start with methionine. So this is how you search for the start of a new protein from the DNA or the RNA sequence and you encode for the proteins.
So in conclusion, codons of three nucleotides, they encode for the proteins and moreover, the ribosomes, they polymerize these amino acids into chains and then these proteins, they fold to take 3D conformations.